The Overtone series is a fantastic tool in music in general. And today I want to show you an orchestral example in which I grabbed just a bunch of notes from the Overtone series and let this become my source material for the whole composition. Don't believe me? I can back it up and give you some evidence for that. Let's jump into the video. I just picked five notes and that becomes the complete content of my composition. <laughs> Sounds a bit crazy, absolutely. So the first thing that I really did was I analyzed the distances between those notes. And these numbers right here, they only refer to chromatic distances, to chromatic steps between those notes. So from an E to a G, obviously, that is three chromatic steps and so on. So this is what we call the horizontal formula to this line, okay? It's three, three, two, two. And that is something that I want to use as my base of thinking. And I want to be inspired by that formula because this formula is supposed to become my glue, my, my red line through the composition. So the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, what if I use this horizontal formula as my baseline? Because why not? <laughs> so I started on an E. The second step was, okay, let me reverse that formula. Instead of going up from a note, like three up, another three up, two up, another two up, I've picked a note and I went three down, three down, two down, and two down. So it's basically a reflection of my original horizontal formula. And the next thing was I have left some space between those two lines, of course, for the reason that I can bring in some notes for harmonization. They are harmonized completely in parallel. It's all the same structure. When you look at this structure here, we count these structures from bottom to top. So in order to get this structure from my lead line, I have to count these numbers in reverse. So from this F sharp, I'm reading two down, that is E. From my E, I'm reading three down, that leads me to C sharp. From the C sharp, three down, I'm getting to A sharp. Okay, and that is the process that I've applied to any of those notes from my lead line. Then right here in this last structure, you see the D root tone, right? And you see probably the E flat above. The distance from D to an E flat, that is an octave plus one chromatic. And that is what we call a 13. And the 13 is a special interval, really, because it sticks out in a very dissonant way. We call this the producer's interval, <laughs> because producers who usually don't know much about music, but they are giving the money for the production, so they are interested, of course, in getting a good result. They have a talent to recognize 13s because they stick out in a bad way. It's a little joke, I know, but you know that is why we call this the producer's interval. So a 13, it does not appear in the overtone series. When we start on a C note, you won't see a D flat. That would be our 13. There is no D flat. A 13 does not appear in the overtone series, and that makes it a bit weird sometimes. There are ways how you can use it, but for now, I just want to point out that here's a 13. If it doesn't bother you, you don't have to fix it, but we want everybody to be aware of 13s in general. The next thing right here, it's always the same structure from above. The only thing that I've done from this line to that line is applying voice leading rules. From now on, I just want to refer to these colors. And they are basically all the same structure, set in context with a different root, but they are basically the same thing. Let me just play you with this little sketch. As you can tell from the colors, you can basically see where things come from. So the part in red here, well, guess what? That's our horizontal formula, at least a portion of that, right? Three, two, two. The horizontal formula originally was three, three, two, two. So I can simply divide my horizontal formula into segments 
And that's what I did right here and used this as a little introduction, really. When I play you this score, I want to refer to the sketch again, because this is way easier to follow. I don't have to scroll that much, and you probably won't see it anyway when I keep on scrolling all the time. If you want to learn more about the Overton series and how to use this in your compositions and also in your orchestrations, then please check out the Academy that you will find under musicintervaltheory.academy. We have a lot of materials about the Overton series and how to implement this into your writing. Well, this was Frank. Have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you in the next one.